assholes. We've all got them. It's not how we need to start this. Am I the asshole? Me? Never. I've actually never been wrong in my entire life. Do you want to not mind your own business with me? Then stay here because that's what we're doing. I think we all know why I've called you here today. And by called you, I mean you clicked on it and you read the title and we all know what we're here for. Two thousand years later. So I can't intro my videos. I think that's quite clear. We're reading Reddit, am I the asshole posts. We're reading other people's problems, making them our own briefly, judging them, and then concluding who is or is not the asshole. <laughs> now I'm gonna say a hole because I really can't be bleeping every asshole that comes out of my mouth. Want to know who's never been an a-hole in their entire life? My upper tier patrons, my most worthy patrons. The backbone of this channel, literally. These videos would not be possible without my patrons. Yeah, even the Reddit videos, even the Reddit videos YouTube doesn't love. Do you think it could be because we started the video saying asshole six times? I could not put my whole red or C into these videos. <laughs> I couldn't make Am I the A-hole videos on YouTube if it wasn't for my patrons or pretty much any of the other videos that I make that we all enjoy because they're not very easily monetized. If you want to become a patron there's tiers for as little as three dollars a month or if you want to go on the other end and join the inner circle tier you will get so many things. There's so many things on that tier such as the low budget shit show Carabiner. By the way welcome back everyone to the low budget shit show. That's where we are. That is what this place is called. It's really all summed up in the name hey. <laughs> on that tier you can also choose from one of these shirts that I will send out to you along with a little thank you letter if you will from me to you. You also get bonus content there's going to be a whole another one of these am i the asshole videos on patreon that i'm going to film straight after this so you if you enjoy this type of video there's going to be a whole another one over on patreon if you're watching this right now you also get a discount to my clothing brand rift supply co which is where you can get the best tote bag in the entire world and what i mean by the best tote bag is it's got a zip <laughs> it's got a zip so your shit doesn't fall out because i hate oh i hate a flimsy tote bag it's nice thick material when the next world war inevitably happens this will be the last thing standing she's thick. <laughs> it's honestly just a sleigh. It's just one big sleigh. And if you want to sleigh even further than that, we've also got a bunch of different hats over on Rift. There's some crew necks, there's tees over there. There's a bunch of different stuff. Those are the best ways to support the channel if you enjoy this kind of content. And I do try to include a lot in the membership to make sure it's worth your while and worth your money. You can also directly message me on Patreon if you've got any other ideas for what you want me to add to the tiers. But let's get into the drama that is not our own. The imported drama, which is honestly the best kind of drama because I we, we can switch off straight after this. Am I the a-hole when my husband doesn't tell me what he's doing all the time? This sounds like a red flag. <laughs> this doesn't sound all that healthy. Am I the a-hole when I, 34 female, get mad when my husband, 35 male, does things without telling me? If I just read that, I would be inclined to say yes. He owns his own office and his office closes at 5 p.m. The house is about a 20 minute drive away. This is already feeling micromanagey, uh, but he usually gets home between 5 and 6 p.m. because he gets out late sometimes. This last situation, he went out to eat dinner with his brother and a business representative to discuss business things. The reason I got mad was he got home at 6 p.m. and never told me anything about his plans. We usually eat after we put the kids to bed. About an hour later, we're getting our young kids to bed and after I ask if he's planning on cooking potatoes for dinner, he says no, but he could make me some because he ate already. I ask if he's joking that he ate already and he tells me he went out to dinner. I yelled at him, Oh, I don't love that. <laughs> I yell at him for not telling me. That's already seems way too extreme unless there's more context here. He said that he didn't need to tell me because he was still home around the same time he always gets home and that I am absurd for wanting him to tell me where he's at. Not only am I mad because he didn't tell me but the fact that he doesn't think he has to tell me. Also mad because he says he doesn't do these things very often and that once in a while is okay because he doesn't do it every day. What is the issue here? Babe, <laughs> the only a holy thing I think the husband did in this situation was like, if you go and make plans and don't tell someone about it and it's going to affect their plans aka dinner that's an inconvenience it's inconsiderate it can it's rude obviously their routine dictates that her dinner is merged with his right so if he does something else she's left in the lurch i get that get being annoyed at that immediately jumping to yelling is like whoa <laughs> too much. It really feels like there may be like something else entirely happening here because it just seems like the reaction is not fitting the crime <laughs> and you don't need to know where your partner is 100% of the time. That's weird. If you ask and they're actively lying and hiding it, like fair enough, that's sus as hell. But like telling someone where you are and what you're doing at all times is super weird. I don't care if you're married. I don't care if any, like I just, it's why. I'm going to assume like him getting something else to eat put her out in some way and that's why she's annoyed. And for that reason alone, I would 
argue maybe everyone is the a-hole here. Like if he did that knowing it was gonna put her out, but generally she seems like the a-hole. Too much, too much, babe. Sounds like there are bigger issues here. Let's move on to the next one. Am I the a-hole for not letting my neighbor use my driveway to access their home? Sure seems like it. And we know I love judging based off the first sentence, but let's see. I live in a suburban neighborhood where the houses are fairly close together. My next door neighbor's house is situated, situated behind mine and their driveway is narrow and difficult to drive. As a result, they often struggle to park their large SUV in their own driveway. Recently, my neighbor came and asked me if they could use my driveway to park their car and access their home. They told me that it would only be temporary and they would make their lives, and it would make their lives easier. Initially, I was hesitant, but I agreed to let them use my driveway on a trial basis. However, after a few weeks, I noticed that their car was constantly parked in my driveway, making it difficult for me to access my own garage. Okay. Plus, their guests started using my driveway as well, creating even more congestion. I spoke to my neighbor and explained the situation wasn't working out for me, and I asked them to stop using my driveway. They became upset and argued I was being selfish and rude to them. No. Or no, as all the comments are going to say. I mean, I really know their situation, but I feel like my driveway is my personal space and your property and your house, correct? And I shouldn't have to give it up for their convenience. I agree. Th yeah, that's totally fair enough. Obviously not the a-hole. I want to know why it was ever going to be temporary. Like, were they planning on selling their big car? Because that's really the only solution here. Like, why was that going to be temporary? Or was that just them trying to weasel their way in? Which I, th I think it was because I'm a pessimist. <laughs> but like, temporary until what happened? what was gonna change. Also agreeing for them to use it on a trial basis is not also agreeing to let all of their friends use it and block your own usage of your own driveway. Like no, not the a-hole. Am I the a-hole? I, 20 female, refused to stay at my boyfriend 26 male's hotel on my girl's trip. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> a little backstory to give everyone some context. So me and my girlfriends are planning to go to London at the end of April because one of the girls has a birthday and for that case, we decided to go to London since she's always wanted to go there. We've been planning this trip since last year, December, 2023 and I make sure to inform my boyfriend of the trip and he said it was fine. I already hate this and your boyfriend sucks. <laughs> we don't know the details. It's not up to him to say whether or not you going on a trip with your friends is fine. So let's start there. And I'm almost certain that the boyfriend being controlling is what's gonna be the issue here. Much like the wife earlier that needed to know everything all the time. I've informed him that we might stay at a friend's place since hotels in London are a bit pricey or we might stay at a hotel, but it all depends on how we feel. Fast forward to this month, March, 2024, me and my friends were on FaceTime trying to decide which hotel to reserve for the trip. And we decided on the hotel, but it were, but we're still considering staying at a friend's place still. I told my boyfriend all of this. And that's when he told me he was also going to London with a friend of his. So that was a fucking lie. Is that friend his right hand? Because there's no way. But he doesn't want to sleep in the same hotel room as his friend, which I understood fully. Girl, stand up. Your boyfriend is lying and he's a wanker. <laughs> he went ahead and asked me to reserve a hotel room for him as well. And I accepted, but I reminded him that me and my girls weren't sure if we're going to stay at the hotel. Like I mentioned, they are pricey and we're traveling on a budget. So staying at a friend's place is going to save us some money. But we reserve the hotel just in case of anything. You annoy me too, because please use a comma. <laughs> and... This is a wall of text, babe. Paragraphs, commas, chuck a dash in there. Chuck a semicolon in, who, ca who cares? Let's be crazy. Don't mind me, I'm being a bit of a smart ass today. <laughs> and I asked him which dates he's going to London and he mentioned the same dates as me because he's a fa he's a liar and he's going to try and keep an eye on you because he thinks that you're gonna go cheat on him on this girl's trip. And he's actually, since I'm being incredibly presumptuous today. He's not going with his friend. There is no friend. He's gonna book the hotel. He's gonna try and get you to stay in his hotel. He's gonna take over the whole damn girls trip because he's insecure as shit. If I'm wrong about that, you just edit that little part out of the video there. <laughs> because as I said earlier, I've never been wrong. I asked him which dates he's going. He said same dates as me, but I didn't think anything of it because it was such a coincidence. Stand up. <laughs> Stand up, babe. You're dating a wanker. He then told me that he wants me to stay with him at his hotel during my girl's trip since we're a couple. And there it is. My always being right complex is not being helped by this, which I understand. But like I mentioned from the start, this is a trip that I plan with my girls since December. It would be rude of me to tell them, hey, I'm going to go stay with my boyfriend at his hotel during our trip yet we planned everything together yeah but he said during the day i could go and hang out with my friends and at night i could go to his hotel to sleep and that he thinks it doesn't make sense for us as a couple to fly out in the same city and not stay at the same place but i said oh my god girl a comma a comma use it <laughs> i did get my period today so should i be filming this video in particular yes it's gonna be funny um uh, blah 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 your boyfriend sucks he's being controlling and he's also lying to your face he can't even be controlling with his chest as well he's lying he's made up this 
whole charade, which leads me to inquire, what else is he lying about? I said no, because he was not in my plans since the beginning and I can't just start to change everything just because he feels like he also wants to go to Lon London on those exact dates. I can't believe she's even asked, is she an a-hole for this? Like this is so clearly not a situation where she could ever be an a-hole. Like it's so obviously the boyfriend is a weird liar, <laughs> a weird little freak. This boyfriend and the wife from the other post should get together because it is a red flag parade, unless in both cases there is substantial information missing. Red flags everywhere, huge manipulator, lying. What else is he lying about? This is a recent post. So if for some reason you were the girl who wrote this and you were watching this, run. Also, she, I've just realized she's 20, he's 26 run that age gap oh it just can be fine like it can be fine it's obviously not in this particular situation though is you can't that's unhealthy that's not okay this is not okay am i, <laughs> am I the a-hole for assuming my baby could come to a super bowl party Interesting, and I, I do want to I do want the context for this one. Wife and I, late 20s, got invited to a Super Bowl party yesterday. We have a 15 month old, still shitting itself, tiny baby. I, sh I assume with the invite, our kid was invited too. It was a text invite saying this is happening at this time and place, no other details. In my history of going to Super Bowl parties, I've always been family friendly. I don't actually know because I am not in America. We don't do the Super Bowl in Australia. To me, when I hear Super Bowl party though, it doesn't scream family friendly ever, especially with the shit that I see online around the Super Bowl. It doesn't seem even adult friendly, <laughs> to be honest. It doesn't seem friendly. So I didn't think twice about bringing my kids to my, kids, you said kid, could have been a typo. We're on the West Coast and it's over by eight. So it's a day thing and not really a late night. Apparently my kid was not invited and my buddy who hosted wasn't happy he was brought over. We had a discussion that turned into an argument and we left. He never mentioned no kids. Am I the asshole for assuming he could come? I don't know. It is shitting itself, but it's it's also walking around and probably an, it's quite annoying. <laughs> it's not a kid and it's not a newborn infant. And that's all I know about child development. Thank you for coming. Oh, oh look, I would say this guy's the a-hole because there's absolutely no fucking way I would want a kid at like state of origin night or any kind of drinking sports night you know like, let alone a, like a toddler a really the most annoying form of a baby really i do think it's on the parents at that point to check be like hey can my kid come and he said late 20s too i'm late 20s if my friend <laughs> if my friend randomly rocked up with a kid like there's no way there's no way any environment that i'm drinking in watching sports is okay to have a kid at. As I would assume with like most people in their 20s, I would definitely, and if I had a kid, God forbid, I would definitely check beforehand if I could bring this kid to a party where everyone is drinking. That is so wild. I do think they're the a-hole here. Yes, the friend could have could have clarified and been like, hey, it's not really a kid's event. It's also not on them to, to be thinking about your kids. It's on you to double check where you can bring your goddamn kids. I don't know. It seems like most of the comments are also saying they're the a-hole and like you should definitely check beforehand. I'm assuming these are coming from people who are in America and have like the context of what Super Bowl nights are like. There is one guy that said, not the a-hole. He's basically said, yeah, they're not inherently family events. They can be kid unfriendly, but also says it's not like everyone is drunk and throwing fists. I beg to differ. A lot of the shit I've seen, people are fighting their TVs. Dull, I don't know. Even people yelling at the TVs, like you shouldn't have a 15 month old there. It's just not, it's icky. Oh my God, we may have another a-hole straight up. Am I the a-hole for telling another mother our children aren't close anymore due to intelligence levels? I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> I'm gonna say yes. My daughter, let's call her Sophie, used to be friends with Kat. They used to be best friends in elementary school, but ever since middle school, they just started to grow apart. The school split the kids in advance and normal for math and science. All other classes, they're still together. My daughter got placed in the advance and Kat got placed in normal. No big deal, they still see each other in school. They were still close friends until group projects. There had been multiple group projects and kids get to pick their partners. Kat and Sophie usually work together and that's when the issues started happening. Sophie would get really frustrated that the work Kat did wasn't correct. I told her just turn it in without fixing it and she got a bad grade on that assignment. After that, Sophie went through a period of time fixing stuff. After a while, I told her stop doing group projects with her. So they stopped doing group projects together and their friendship blew up. This seems 
weird. So they're not friends anymore. It's Sophie's birthday and inv invites were sent out. Kat wasn't on the invite list my daughter made. I got a call from my mum asking why she wasn't invited. I informed her they aren't really friends anymore. She said invite her anyway since this is just a spat. Yeah, and also like primary school friendships. Like if there was someone I was ever friends with and then you're like not as close friends anymore, you'd still invite them. Like it's not that, it's not that deep. You're 12. I told her the people invited were people my daughter wanted at the event. And your daughter's a kid and it's your job to guide her to not be an asshole. Have you considered that? This went for a while and came to why they weren't friends anymore and I said it was due to both girls' intelligence levels. Mm -hmm. Asshole immediately. I tried explaining the group project issue. She got pissed accusing me of calling her kid dumb. Never said that. She called me a jerk, cause you are. <laughs> there is no way your kids aren't friends because of group projects and differences in academic performance. Also to say that like, your kid being in two advanced classes means that they are inherently more intelligent than kids who aren't is a fundamental misunderstanding of what intelligence actually is. This woman has such a stick up her ass. Edit, I did tell her that why they weren't firmed anymore, do you mean friends? You would fail the group assignment. She kept asking why, that's the reason I brought up the issue of why they aren't friends anymore. I wasn't gonna lie. Also, she should already know why that friendship blew up. The kids were arguing about it constantly for a while. If your kid is so smart, if your kid is so intelligent across all these domains, AKA two classes specifically in primary school, we've all been in advanced classes. Like it's not, unless this is like different in other countries, going into the, the advanced classes is not like going to a school for gifted kids. <laughs> Sometimes you just get separated. Also, you're teaching your daughter that she's allowed to be uh, a little bit of a rude cunt to people and look down on people if they're dumber than her by her own definition, not by an objective definition. Like, yes, yeah, she can be an a-hole to people if they don't do as well as you in two subjects at school. Really setting her up for failure too, because when she inevitably meets people that are smarter than her, she's gonna think she's not worth as much as those people as well. Big fish, small pond. Like, it's, got, it's going to happen and then she's going to go into it with that mindset that this mother has instilled in her. And she's gonna lose a lot of friends in the process because she's an insufferable cunt. <laughs> Thanks to this mother. <laughs> and she's gonna lose a lot of friends in the process because she's being an a-hole because the mother taught her to. She may be in advanced classes now, a lot of the time those kids plateau and aren't the smartest when they're in older grades or in university or out in the world. Oftentimes it's the kids that didn't do quite as well and learnt to work hard through it and not just get by on on talent or natural intelligence, whatever you want to call it. It's those kids that do far better later in life because they did learn how to work hard. Oh, she, this mother's just really setting her daughter up for failure, which is sad to see because it's not the kid's fault. Also, don't call someone's kid dumb without calling them dumb. Like, you know what you were saying, you know it's hurtful. It, just don't do it. This mother sucks. <laughs> Am I the a-hole for getting mad at my parents for not letting me say ovary in front of my dad because it grosses him out when I'm sick with an ovarian cyst? Even without that last bit, grow up. <laughs> Are you also not allowed to say liver? Are you not allowed to say kidney? What if, like, where does it end? I really don't even need to read the rest of this. The dad is the a-hole. Grow up, you're an adult. Probably a misogynist. How are you squeamish over an ovary? And X, Y, and Z. So I'm currently living with my parents because of the bad housing market. And I had a big falling out with my mum and dad today. It was the first beautiful day in a long time and I desperately wanted to be outside enjoying it, but I've been in excruciating pain the last few days due to an ovarian cyst. I have a history of these and the pain has been so bad in the past that I've had surgery as the doctors mistook the, rupturing, mistook the rupturing cyst for a rupturing appendix. Unfortunately, today was just a really hard day because I was nauseous and feeling extremely sharp pains and I was stuck in bed all day. Around 6.30 p.m. I finally get out of bed in an attempt to go out for an hour to try and make something of the day. My dad asks what's up, to which I respond, I'm in tremendous amounts of pain. It's probably an ovarian cyst rupturing. I'll be all right. And then I left. When I get back, my mum is home from work sitting with my dad at the couch watching TV. I sit with them, still in visible pain and my mum starts with me. Honey, you know your dad hates when you talk about your lady problems. You should just talk to me about it. The dad is, is he of this century? Like, what do you mean? Back note, my dad does hate any words related to the reproductive system of a woman, specifically. Don't ask me why. It's because he's a misogynist. Uterus, ovary, fallopian tubes all make him ick. This adult man at his big age. It's been a past joke where I'll describe my issues using these words to tease him, but I've also told him I found it a little ridiculous. It's one thing if it's one word, but all words relating to that, 
misogyny, <laughs> whether it's ingrained and he's even conscious of it. I would bet money on the fact that he would not have this issue with the male reproductive system. I proceed to tell my mom I don't appreciate a lecture right now. I'm in extreme pain and I do have an ovarian cyst that feels like it's rupturing. Far more important than your grown ass father. Having the ick about women. It's a medical issue. I'm not trying to piss him off. The only logical response so far. He starts getting agitated saying I needed to stop while I start getting agitated and being lectured about a word that is what's medically happening to my body right now. I explained if my brother didn't like the word amputation, he's super squeamish, but I had to get one, he'd have to deal with it and that my dad needed to deal with it too. Good on you for standing your ground. They both started yelling at me that I was being disgusting and that no man will ever want to hear those words. No man, actual man, grown ass man would have an issue with hearing any of that because it's just a factual, logical reality of life. Oh my God, what a fucking baby. I went back and forth with my mum via text saying I found this to be pathetic and that he was a man child. Absolutely. <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth. I'm in pain, maybe I overreacted so I need another opinion. Absolutely not, your dad's the a-hole. Needs to grow the hell up. All of the comments are basically saying not the a-hole obviously, that either they're grown men and they don't care about these words or they're dating, so married to men who don't care because again they're grown they're grown adult men why would you give a shit at some point in his life your dad is going to have to come to terms with the english language even though he sounds very very sensitive he will be okay <laughs> we will persevere okay one more and then the rest of the video will be going on patreon am i the a-hole for refusing to apologize to my friend's boyfriend <laughs> The post starts with, this is so fucking stupid. I feel like I'm in high school again, which I kind of got, uh, that's the kind of the vibe I got reading the title. I, 34 female. Okay, so we're in our thirties being told to apologize to, what? This sounds like a, a tiff between like 18 year olds. I, 34 female, have a friend named Summer, also 34 female, who's a free spirit. In high school, she got sent home multiple times for going to class barefoot. Iconic, honestly, love that for Summer. She dropped out of college and hit, hitchhiked to Mexico one summer. I I kind of love her. What? She sounds great. Didn't tell anyone where she was going. Oh my God, Summer, you are crazy. She forgets to pay her phone bill, so she's occasionally unreachable. I love this woman. I really hope she's not in the wrong in this story because this is hilarious. <laughs> I know that sounds like a lot and it will sound like even more by the end of this, but we've been friends since we were 10. I don't care. She's a mess. I love her. We're in this for the long haul. I love you and I love Summer. I need more Summer stories. Who is this woman? Summer's boyfriend, Will, is the opposite of her. And I hoped he'd mellow out her wild side. I hope no one ever mellows out her wild side. She seems amazing. You know how Summer forgets to pay her phone bill? Well, apparently she did it again. <laughs> I love, I'm obsessed with Summer. He said he was having trouble locating Summer. I said, yep, that's Summer for you. You get a hold of her. If you get a hold of her, please tell her to call me. Best of luck. Then I hung up thinking nothing of it. Will rang me again and demanded to know where Summer is. I truthfully said that I have no idea, but I'll call her parents for him and see if they know. I went to do exactly that, but Will called me again before I could. I answered and it was the same question, but angrier. I hate Will. Will is really annoying. Will is not the vibe. Ugh, Will is a bag of rocks holding Summer back. I don't know anything about their relationship, but I am sure of that. God, this guy sucks. Where the fuck is my girlfriend? I'll spare you the suspense. This went on for quite some time. Absolutely no clue why Will was so convinced I know where Summer is, but I told him exactly when slash where I last saw her and that she disappears like this routinely, which shouldn't he know? Also, is this also a man who's 34 years old? Why are you behaving this way? He disappears like this routinely, which he damn well knows. Okay, so he, he knows. They've been together for a year. Okay, maybe I need to stop running my mouth and just read the next sentence because <laughs> I use the plainest language possible, but Will just wouldn't relent. He called me about 50 times. Will sucks. Will is a fucking wet blanket. Look, can we get rid of Will? I put it on silent at first, but by the 51st time I'd had enough. I answered and said, bro, stop blowing up my phone. I don't know where Summer is and I'll block you if I have to. You're gonna get me fired. Oh, and she's at work throughout all of this. Then I turned my phone off. Today, Summer called me. I was expecting some form of explanation, but she opened with, I'm handing my phone to Will. He wants an apology. I completely forgot that this that's what the first sentence of this was. He he wants an apology. He wants an apology. He was the one being a nutcase. And Summer was the one not answering. What? I stopped her and said, apology for what? She said, for saying he blew up your phone. Summer, I want to like you, but you're really annoying me. To which I replied, he did blow up my phone and I was at work too. Maybe I shouldn't have threatened to block, but he didn't get the point the first 50 times I said it calmly. Will does not understand boundaries. Will is a wanker. Summer said, just apologize because he's really pissed and he is where I'm probably the asshole. No, 
no to all of fucking that. <laughs> I'm not apologizing because her milk toast boyfriend, milk toast, I have never heard that in my life. Milk toast is a timid or feeble person. <laughs> Feeble, insipid, or bland, which is exactly what Will sounds like, and I love that word. I'm not apologizing because her milk toast boyfriend, who is basically the human equivalent of a dry ham sandwich, <laughs> is on some ego trip. I feel less bad about calling this boy a wet blanket because this is hilarious. I said that, but nicer, and she hung up on me. Now I'm thinking I should have sucked it up rather than jeopardize two decades of friendship. No, 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 absolutely the fuck not. Summer is the only one jeopardizing two decades of friendship. Also, if if this is all it takes to jeopardize that two decades, that says a lot. Will was acting like an absolute nutcase, psycho weird bitch. You don't call your girlfriend's friend 50 fucking times at work and then get angry when they're like, fuck off. He needs to be the one apologizing. And why is he getting angry at you for something Summer did? Which is like, she didn't even do anything wrong per se. Like she just did what she's always done, which he knows about, which is not pay her phone bill. Will is the only one in the wrong here and Summer for, for backing up his shit. The only thing I'm sus of is like, why was he so convinced that he, that you knew where she was? I'm thinking there is something else happening behind the scenes. And that's why Summer is like pandering to him. And that's why he was so over the top about something that he should have really known was a pattern of behavior for Summer. Summer pandering to him when he's clearly in the wrong could also be like a giant red flag. Is Summer okay? Why was he so aggressively urgent about it? God, I, oh, I, ugh, oh, it's icky. Thank you so much for coming along to the low budget shit show and watching. We dealt with a lot of a-holes today. We really did. If you really enjoy these videos, feel free to go to patreon.com slash Brianne Worth and watch the rest of it. Join us over there. It's a fun time. There's a lot of free shit. There's bonus content already over there and more going up all the time. Don't be an a-hole. Don't be like any of these a-holes and I will see you in a few days with a new video.